Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today for ANX's 30-minute technology webcast, The Three Pillars of PCI, a solid foundation for franchise systems. My name is Chris Schramm and I am the marketing coordinator here at ANX. To our audience, please note that this is just a one of many multi-part series of data breaches and how you can take steps to prevent it from happening to you. For more information, please visit ANX.com. Before we begin, let's cover a few logistics. All lines are in listen mode only. We will answer questions at the end of the event, but please feel free to ask questions at any time by using the chat box. A link to the webinar recording will be emailed to you shortly after the event and it will be available online on demand at anx.com. Every attendee today will receive a $5 Starbucks gift card for to the, attending today's webinar. Also, there will be a couple opportunities throughout the webinar to win an additional gift card by answering a trivia question, so have your chat box open. At the end of today's webinar, one participant will randomly be chosen to win a $50 Amazon.com gift certificate. You must be present to win. And all participants of our February webinars will be entered in a drawing with one random participant winning a Kindle Fire tablet. More details on this drawing will be mentioned at the end of today's webinar. With that said, it is my pleasure to introduce our feature speaker for this webinar, Glenn Moore, Vice President of Marketing at ANX. Glenn Moore joined ANX in August 2008. He's responsible for product and channel marketing. Prior to joining ANX, Glenn has more than 20 years of experience in business-to-business -business marketing and sales. He served as Vice President of Commercial Marketing at LDMI Talk America and Cavalier Telephone. Prior to that, Glenn managed various sales and marketing business units at MCI Telecommunications. Glenn holds a Master's and Bachelor's degree in Telecommunications from Michigan State University. With that, Glenn, the floor is yours. All right, thank you, Chris, and good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. Uh, I'm going to definitely try to keep it to 25 or so minutes. Uh, I know it's the end of the day for some of you in the East Coast time, and, and uh, I do appreciate you uh, joining us today. So in the next uh, few minutes, I'm going to talk about some different ways to look at PCI compliance, and looking at them differently uh, can help uh, really examine where to start because I think that's the biggest problem a lot of especially smaller businesses have is how do you even begin to tackle PCI compliance. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a very hefty uh, set of requirements um, but as we're seeing it's uh, the, you know, the need to become PCI compliant is, is becoming uh, reinforced by the banks uh, more aggressively uh, the risks are growing every day for companies and merchants that aren't PCI compliant. Um, so we're going to examine a, a few ways to look at it and a few ways to really get started. And, and really the focus of the remarks will be on um, how a, I'm going to call it a hub location. And what I mean by hub is a, a corporate franchise owner. So the, the corporate office that's in charge of making sure that the franchise locations are PCI compliant what that hub individual can do to really help the franchises with this uh, uh, monumental challenge of uh, becoming PCI compliant. And then only spend a couple minutes at the end on, uh, on the ANX stuff. But before I begin, um, I just wanted to give an opportunity to win a Starbucks gift card. So listen carefully. I'm going to play about 10 seconds of a television theme song. Use your WebEx chat box and shout out the correct name. Now, this one's pretty easy, so listen carefully. Here we go. Anyone yet? Oh, we got a winner. All right. Hector guessed everyone loves Raymond. All right. And right? Hector is right. All right. Good job, Hector. 
good show. All right, let's jump into it. So, of course, uh, the, the best way to start when you're talking about uh, PCI is, is the goal view. And it's when you look at the goals of PCI, uh, there's really six goals, and you break it down. It's pretty simple and straightforward, and it makes a lot of sense. You, you need to build and maintain a secure network. You have to protect cardholder data. You have to maintain a vulnerability management program. Implement strong access control measures. Monitor and test your network, then maintain an information security policy. So someone would look at that and say, okay, that's, that's not that hard. Uh, you know, what's the big deal here? I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. Well, it starts to get challenging then when you break down those goals into the what's called the digital dozen or the 12 requirements. And these 12 requirements have 200 audit points. So uh, now it becomes a very... A uh, huge requirement for most small businesses, and there's technology requirements, there's people requirements, there's process, um, but most people just look at at the terminology, and it's very technical, and they quickly say, "Whoa, whoa, wait, I, I can't do this. Uh, this is not something that uh, uh, is important to me, so I'm just going to put it on the back burner." Uh, but that that really doesn't serve them well because there is a definite risk out there, which we'll talk about in a second. So that's where we come into this, uh, this new way of looking at it uh, that we're using over here at ANX. And it's really lumping the requirement into technology, people, and process. And it's just a way to group the requirements together into one uh, set of thinking. And, and what, what happens is most people, when they see all those technical words, they think that it's all about technology. Well, it really isn't. It's, there's a lot to do with people, and there's a lot of uh, things that need to go on with process. And even if you don't have the wherewithal to do the technology part, a lot of benefit can be gained by focusing on the people side of PCI compliance. And that's what we're going to talk about uh, here today. So just as a quick level set, when I talk about merchant level, uh, merchant level one, two, three, four, it's all based on the number of annual credit card transactions. So level fours are, are most of the uh, community out there, less than 20,000 transactions a year. And that is where all the, <clears throat> the data breaches are happening. So as you can see in this chart, over 90% of the reported data breaches happen with level fours. Um, and the level ones through threes have a lot more transactions, but the cyber criminals know they're harder to breach. They still get breached, and you, you hear about it in the news, but the, the target is really the level fours. There's a couple reasons for that, key reasons, and, and really it's, it boils down to uh, this big ball of confusion here. They lack... The, the, really the, the technical resources and staff to tackle those 200 and some requirements. So they need help. They need guidance. They need someone to uh, hold their hand a little bit through getting started, where to start. Uh, when they get stuck doing their annual self-assessment questionnaire, they need resources. And, and the bottom line is most of them don't have that. So they, they either don't start or they start and, and, uh, and, and don't complete their PCI compliance, which is really a shame because the cost of security breaches continues to skyrocket. In fact, a recent statistic from a Ponemon Institute uh, survey now shows the cost per breached record is $204. So that's per record, and that's uh, hitting an all-time high. If you look, take a, a peel back a few layers, every breach causes a huge loss of productivity, loss of customer loyalty, uh, can result in legal action, even class action suits, unfavorable media coverage, uh, and of course, customer turnover. And, and really the big zinger here for the, the, the corporate uh, interest and really even individual franchise interest is loss in the overall uh, value of the brand. So one location in a franchise chain that's breached can result in 
12% loss of value, not just for that franchise location, but the brand itself and, and neighboring franchise locations. And kind of equally concerning, it takes about a year or more sometimes for the brand reputation to be restored after a uh, data breach is reported and publicized in the news. Let's talk about uh, you know, how, how we can uh, prevent that. So even if you're not ready to fully become PCI compliant, let's, let's group these things together, talk about some steps that can be taken near term without deploying a lot of additional resources so that you can reduce the risk of data breach and, and uh, also take steps toward becoming PCI compliant. So the first uh, set of requirements is on the people side. And by far the biggest thing that uh, the hub can do is help the spoke locations or the franchise locations become PCI trained. That, by the way, is a PCI requirement in and of itself. So what I mean by that is awareness training. Uh, something as simple as all the people that touch credit cards in that merchant location need to know all about low-tech exploits. They can't write down credit card numbers and throw it in the trash. Someone could uh, go in the dumpster and, and dive through it. That's one of the, the ways in which franchise locations are, uh, are frequently uh, compromised. Uh, there's all sorts of scams out there, email scams, uh, online scams, that, uh, employees at the merchant location need to be taught to recognize those. Uh, there's also uh, imposter scenarios. So you have fake repair people showing up at the merchant location, wanting access to the equipment room, saying they, uh, something is uh, uh, not working. That's a quick way to stick a thumb drive into uh, a server that's containing the uh, uh, credit card information. People need to be aware of that. Um, and also just something as simple as uh, how to delete files, how to permanently delete. Another thing is uh, locking doors to the facility, not just the front door, but doors uh, in the back room where uh, server and computer equipment is stored. You need separate locks and, and, uh, and only certain personnel should have access. So all that kind of training has nothing to do with technology at all, but it's very essential to securing the location and you need to really partner with a company to help make that, make that happen. Um, and the other types of training that, that need to happen are IT training. So whoever maintains the equipment uh, and, and infrastructure at that merchant location, there's a set of PCI training that that, uh, that individual or company needs to take. And there's also risk owner training. So training for the owner of that merchant location uh, so all that type of training will, will go a long way toward making your site more PCI compliant and, uh, and really safer. Go to the next one here. Uh, next one on the people side, passwords. Sounds really simple, but an astonishing 44% do not change vendor supplied passwords, which is crazy. It makes it extremely easy for someone to hack in and, uh, and, and, and steal information. So just, and that's part of the training too, to change passwords and make them complex. So uh, again, focusing on the people will really bear results quickly. On the process side of things, Quite simply, looking at logs um, doesn't require a lot of technology, but you want to know who is looking at your data and when. You can spot a lot of suspicious activity by looking at remote access logs, server logs, and uh, it could be taught to a uh, kind of a lay store manager without a lot of effort. And I think it's a, it's a reasonable uh, thing to reinforce and, and, and practice that, that if taken, you will make yourself safer. And it's also a requirement of PCI. So I encourage on the process side of uh, the hubs to really get engaged and put a program in place, some education to teach the merchant locations how to read these, uh, these uh, various log files. Another thing is uh, written security policies. 
only 39% of all businesses out there have a written security policy, which is uh, an element, a required element, element of PCI. And an even smaller percentage of level fours have a written security policy. And it's important that that be in place. It's not just a, a piece of bureaucratic trivia. It, it helps reinforce the need for security, for, for proper process, procedures, training. So if it's written down, someone's taken the time to explain it and, and, and put it together. So by providing a template to the merchant locations, the hub can really aid them in putting a written security policy in place. Most people don't know how to start, where to get one. There's a lot of vendors out there that you can partner with that will provide you with a written security policy. Uh, we happen to be one of them, but uh, delaying getting that in place really puts you at risk uh, in, in the PCI game. Just on the technology side, real briefly, since that one is focused on a lot, uh, the firewall is a real important technology. Uh, don't be fooled by just putting it in and thinking you're safe. You also have to make sure it's configured properly, and most of them, uh, firewalls are not configured properly. On the unified threat management front, a lot of people think that uh, just because they have a PC with antivirus that they're safe, that's not necessarily the case. People can turn that off. So having UTM on your firewall is a good idea. Wi-Fi is another thing you should be paying attention to. So uh, something as simple as plugging your store-bought Wi-Fi or wireless access point in the wrong port of a firewall can open you up to uh, attacks from someone who walks into your store uh, uh, and, and you think they're a guest, but they're hacking into your server. So you have to be mindful of what port, making sure it's in a DMZ port. And lastly, remote access. You definitely don't want to use those go-to desktop type products. They don't ensure that the computer that's, um, that you're, that's remotely accessing your information is free from different malware. So you want a strong remote access solution that will make you safe. And uh, so those, as many of you may have seen in the news a couple weeks ago, PC Anywhere basically told, uh, or Symantec, the makers of PC Anywhere, told their users to stop using it because their source code had been compromised. So if you're using those kind of low cost or free remote access, think again, uh, it's putting you at risk. So really the, the, the hub, I like to think of the hub as the coach. So what, what they need to do uh, uh, is really guide the franchise location uh, in terms of what tools should they be using. Um, and I like to use the analogy of the federal income tax. Uh, if you just grab the forms from the IRS and start to fill out your federal income tax, it's, it's, it's mind-boggling. But if you use the right tool like TurboTax or Tax Cut, it's a much easier task. It's the same thing with PCI compliance. There needs to be some tools out there, and it's best if all of the merchants in the community of merchants use the same set of tools. It's easier to support that way. Um, and it makes it faster, less resources to become PCI compliant. And then what the, the, the so what of all that is, is a higher percent of locations become PCI compliant. So you can realistically expect 50, 75, even 100% of locations to become PCI compliant if you have the right tool set in place. Another thing you have to do as the hub is really put an infrastructure in place to answer any type of question. It has to be highly available, so this is either the hub needs to do it themselves or partner with a vendor that can, that can do that. It needs to be live answer, so self-help on a website, great, great information, you need that too. But there comes a point in time when questions are going to need to be answered. Someone's sitting down doing their annual self-assessment questionnaire, and they need to speak with someone right then, right there, figuring out how, what, what some question means. So, and any type of PCI question. You know, one of the pitfalls out there is a vendor will, will say they give you support, but then there's all sorts of limitations on the types of questions that they'll entertain. 
So their support might be limited to, oh, I'll help you get logged into our self-serve portal, but they won't answer any question about how the self-assessment questionnaire works or what a certain term means. If, if you're getting that type of support from a partner, it's time to look around and, and, and find a partner that will, that will really help you get a higher percentage of your site's uh, PCI compliance. And, and that partner, you need highly trained individuals who are also very empathetic because you're dealing with people on the other end of the phone that, that get frustrated easily, they don't understand, and you need to, to uh, take the time, explain things, and, and give them the uh, opportunity to, to really understand and ask follow-up questions. So real quick before I wrap things up, another opportunity here to uh, win a uh, Starbucks gift card. Hey, Glenn, can we? Can I give a hint for this? Yeah, you sure can. Okay, it's a 90s sitcom, and it's on the topic that we just spoke about in the last few slides. Ooh, all right. Here we go. Got, we got one, Laura. Oh. <laughs> oh no, Laura didn't get it right. Wayman won, so congratulations. And that, of course, is Coach. That was a good show. Minnesota State University. Is there mm. such a place? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm from Minnesota. I've, <laughs> I've, I've never heard of it. All right. So wrapping up here, uh, the corporate hub should provide, this is the types of support you need to provide out to your uh, franchise locations. You have to help them uh, with tracking, you have to recommend tools, you have to make sure that there's high involvement either with your own direct resources or partner with a vendor such as us or someone else to make sure that that level of involvement and finally help is available so that uh, the merchants can become more PCI compliant. So real quickly, how can uh, ANX help? We're, we're a security company, managed security. We've been in the business for over 12 years. Uh, we started out uh, managing a building and managing a network that, that connects the entire automotive industry together for secure collaboration. And we branched out from there, uh, became a comprehensive, complete security and compliance company. And today we service uh, hundreds of customers in the healthcare, uh, the retail, quick service restaurant, um, and uh, uh, labs industries. So th that's where we play as a company. What we offer for specifically for the merchant community is we have a kind of in-the-box solution where we provide a managed security device with UTM uh, data breach protection, so we provide $100,000 of coverage in the event you are breached uh, to offset those, uh, those high expenses we talked about earlier. We have live support, um, and we also, uh, for anything relating to PCI, both how to use our tool plus just general questions about PCI. And then we have a, a state-of-the-art software as a service remote access solution. We bundle it all together for one low monthly price that the location pays. And then we give the, the hub or, or corporate location important tools that they can use to measure compliance rates across the community um, as well as uh, just, just good information that can help them make their entire franchise chain uh, safer and more PCI compliant. For the bigger locations, the enterprise locations, we, we take our software as a service for PCI and we, we kind of unleash all the capabilities. So it's basically a, uh, a web-based solution uh, that allows you to do task remediation. Um, and then if you have other compliance requirements at your company like Sarbanes-Oxley, it allows a lot of the answers and things like that to be reused. So we also uh, have a very scalable solution uh, for all compliance requirements. We're also a, a, a scanning associated, uh, authorized, excuse me, scanning vendor and qualified security assessor. So we have a lot of certified in PCI individuals and we do consulting. 
so we do gap analysis. Uh, we'll, we'll do implementation plans, uh, report on compliance, uh, penetration testing. So no matter what the type of PCI challenge is, we have the types of uh, certified engineers to, to engage. So that's, that's the end of the planned remarks here. Our, we have two upcoming webinars, one on February 28th, and that's going to be a deep dive into uh, really the financial impact of data breach. So we touched on a few of the stats. We're really going to go into a lot of detail on the next webinar. And then on March 7th, we have a really good webinar uh, talking about using the risk assessment process to become PCI compliant. So you'll want to tune in for that one. So to, uh, to sign up, just visit us at uh, anx.com. You'll see it on the, on the home page there, a link to, uh, to sign up for those other uh, two uh, webinars. And also feel free to email us at sales at anx.com, or you can give us a call there on, on the number on the screen. Um, and as always, uh, plenty of information on our website. Okay, so last thing on the list is a drawing um, of the Amazon.com gift card. All right, I've got everybody in the bowl. We got Paul visiting us from Texas. We'll have him draw. Oh, look at this. We got a repeat winner. Wayman drawn one. So All right. congratulations. Good job. Pay, pays, to, pays to be here. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's all I have. Why don't we, at this point, uh, take some questions if there are any? Yeah, I've got a couple. Um, one person's asking if they purchase the ANX package. Is there a way, a training, or some way to learn it? Because you know, buying it is one thing, but learning it is another. How do we assist with that? Yeah, that, that's a great question, and, and that's one of the things I think we we really excel at. Uh, people will just give you a portal and say, here, hey, have a good day. We will uh, onboard you, set up a kind of a guided tour once you get your, your credentials. So if you are, and we do that right down to the location level. So if, if an individual merchant needs some hand-holding, they can call us and we'll, uh, we have people that can, that can help them do that. But it's a pretty user-friendly portal once they get in. But uh, we realize that people like to, when it's time to focus on, on the task of PCI, they, they want to have that, that extra hand-holding, and that's something that, we, uh, that we're very good at, and we, we've hired plenty of people on our help desk. The other thing I wanted to mention on the help desk, the people that answer the phone, when you're talking to a vendor, make sure that not only are they uh, highly trained, but uh, that there's not any kind of... Uh, uh, dialect uh, differences. So uh, we have uh, US-based uh, folks that, that speak very clearly, um, and uh, I'm not disparaging anyone else, but uh, if that matters to you, um, then you should ask that of your vendor. Where, where, where are the people who are going to support my merchants? Where are they going to be sitting? What kind of training have they had? So those are legit questions that should be asked. OK, another question. Um, they, when we were talking about written policies, this person wanted to know, as a customer, I guess, of a location, can we ask a merchant about their written policies for PCI? Yeah, I, you know, they don't have to disclose that. Um, you know, that's something that, uh, that, that you have to prove as part of your PCI compliance um, to the banks and, to, and, and as part of your uh, proof of being PCI compliant. But there's nothing that compels uh, a merchant to uh, make that a public document or, or give it to someone. So I, I'd be a little careful about that, um, giving it to someone beyond you know, the parent corporation or, or the bank that's requiring uh, to see the proof of that. But you know, they're, they're pretty common stuff. I mean, the things in these security policies, they're, they're very technical, and, and uh, you know, the security policies cover both uh, individual users as well as security policy for your infrastructure your, uh, itself. So there's really, when I say policies, those are the types of policies that need to be maintained at that merchant level. Oh, that's all I have, Glenn. OK, well, thank you very much, everyone. It's, uh, we finished right on time, which is what we're trying to do with our, with our webinar series. Uh, look forward to. Uh, uh, having many of you join us on the next two. So thanks and have a great afternoon.